Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's amazing, you know, something as important as this, and I heard the ministers plead it, members have nothing to say. That's interesting. But you know, Mr. Speaker, I want to again stand in support of, the, of this resolution. Um, I think that the success of every economy, the backbone of every major economy, is small business. And I'm always saying that one thing that every single business, big business, has in common is they all started small. And that's the encouragement, Mr. Speaker, I keep on trying to tell our young people. It doesn't matter how small it is. Microsoft, um, Apple, all of these major companies started in a garage. And the reality is it's our intellectual, our intellectual property is really one of the greatest assets that we have. And I'm, I'm one who is a big believer in supporting small businesses and to get small businesses to also appreciate, Mr. Speaker, that tourism creates an opportunity for them to be in the export market. Because here it is, we have foreigners who are coming to our doorsteps with money in their pockets and the opportunity to brand our products. And that's why the taste of the St. Lucia program that we had of branding all of our products under a singular brand and making sure that when persons come to St. Lucia that they're able to taste and listen um, and feel the vibe of all of these things that we're producing. I also, sp I also speak a lot about Tortuga Rum Cake, which was a small business that was started in Cayman and eventually became now an international business. And it's not just limited to products that we produce, it's services that we provide. Um, and again, the opportunity of taking advantage that the global economy, Mr. Speaker, has moved in our favor. It's moved in our favor, Mr. Speaker, in the sense that persons now are working out of office. And that levels the playing field. Um, Ojo Labs is an example, Mr. Speaker, that now all of the persons who were employed at Ojo are actually working out of their homes. I believe that that's one of the reasons why they gave up the space and I think that ITEL BPO is going to be taking over that space to expand even further. But the reality is that we now in the service sector can provide many services that were unthinkable in the past. And I'm hoping that these micro loans will be made applicable to those persons. The ability to be able to put proper internet in your home, the ability to have a proper computer, um, and to provide the services on a regular basis because the internet is a critical, and I don't know about members, other members in this house, but certainly in my own experience, and also in speaking to many St. Lucians, um, and again, I'm not putting this blame on the government. Um, I think the reality is we have to focus a bit more on our broadband width. Um, it's very frustrating to be able to conduct business on the internet in this country. Um, and I think it's not just St. Lucia, but many other countries in the Caribbean experiencing the same thing. But the, the, the point is that if we're really going to appreciate that we want our young persons to get into small businesses that are global, then we have to be able to create that portal for them to be able to do so. Mr. Speaker, the other thing I would say to you is that, again, I was a bit disappointed in the minister saying this is the first time we're focused on it, because I think that that was more of a slight on her rather than on us. But the reality is, is that I think that we've all been speaking about the small businesses. But what's key to small businesses is the disposable income within our economy. And the reality is, Mr. Speaker, um, this particular motion in itself is not going to solve the problem. And the reality is the cost of doing business in St. Lucia for small businesses has significantly increased, again, because of what has happened with the inflation. And the reality is um, Lucilec and the fuel surcharges at Lucilec are egregious. And I'm, I'm really surprised that we continue to do this. And I, and I put myself in there, as well as, as the former Prime Minister um, and the Minister of Finance, 
I know that we had a lot of meetings in attempts to try to solve this problem with Luslec. Um, but for Luslec to have charged the fuel surcharge increases that they've had, and their cost really, other than the, the, F, the uh, CIF price or FO, FOB price of fuel, nothing else has gone up. And I keep on making the point, and certainly when I've met with the board and the, the management of Luslec, it cannot be that St. Lucia is in the business of making sure that Luslec makes money. Luslec also has to have an appreciation that if it wants its own economic base to grow, it has to be concerned about the competitiveness of its businesses. So, you know, when I speak to small businesses right now, and the substantial increase in the cost of electricity, and particularly on the fuel surcharge, that it is, it is egregious. And it's very, very difficult because it adds no value to your production. It doesn't matter. I'm talking about the, the, the surcharge at loose leg. I'm not talking about the that. I'm saying that we have to go back to the table and renegotiate with Luslec because the deal on the table is not working. In fact, it's working for Luslec. You know, and, and the reality is, and again, I don't want to, be, to ever be considered being hypocritical because like the former Prime Minister um, from Miku South indicated, there are things that I've said consistently. And the reality is, is that government benefits, government view for itself, my apologies. Thank you for the correction. Government benefits from what is going on at Luslec in the form of shares and dividends. We obtain anywhere between eight and twelve million dollars a year in dividends. And the question is, should that money be going to the consolidated fund to help pay for recurrent expenditures? Or is that money that's better used in capital investment or even in terms of subsidizing the cost of electricity to our productive sector? Because the reality is our productive sector is going to struggle to compete on a global basis. And we're going to struggle to provide quality products at a good price if a significant input price is electricity. And the other one is really the end of the day, and I appeal to all members in the House, that there needs to be a focus on growing this economy. And growing that economy is putting monies in people's hands. And the reality is, is I think that we're falling behind. And in speaking to small businesses, speaking to large businesses, everybody is saying that consumption is down. Now the reality is we can put as much money we want into small businesses, but if the opportunity for them to succeed is not there, it's going to be a difficult track and they're going to fail. So the reality is, Mr. Speaker, um, because of what's taking place globally, and I heard the Prime Minister again ridicule um, the suggestions that we had made. It wasn't about solving, you can't solve the global problem of inflation. That's out of our control. But the reality is what you can do is to soften the blow here. And I keep saying this, um, uh, Prime Minister, that it's much better for government to subsidize jobs when the majority of the wage is being paid by a private sector person. Because of the lack of a proper social net system in this country, when a person becomes unemployed in this country, it becomes too heavy of a burden for all of us. So the reality is subsidizing electricity prices, reducing the amount that we're collecting on duties coming in, are all better to do in order to make sure that your private sector remains competitive. Because it's in that competitiveness that it remains employed. And once people are employed and they're getting money in their pocket, that's what creates the consumption. So I want to applaud the minister. And I want also employ, um, and to applaud the former minister as well, because I know he was extremely passionate about developing the resources. And that's a big reason why United Workers' Party was so, um, so strong, so adamant on bringing back the Development Bank. Because the Development Bank is the proper mechanism to have done that. And I only wish that instead of creating a new youth economy, which I think is very important, that we should have saved the money administratively and pumped that money through the development bank and grown the asset base of the bank. When I talk about the asset base, I'm talking about the human asset base of the bank. 
in order to facilitate that. But again, um, I fully support this, but I'm also hoping the commensurate policies to continue to grow our economy, to make sure that there's consumption, to do the things to allow small businesses to compete on a global basis are also going to be taken into consideration. I thank you.